HBO for years has had hard knocks. Netflix now has a new series, docu-series, Quarterbacks. So as Netflix announces theirs, Hard Knocks wants to, HBO wants to up them. And you know what they're looking for in this series in Hard Knocks. They want to be more interesting than Netflix. They're looking for juice and gossip and rumors and inflammation. So the A, B, C, Ds of this move. A, Jets are the most interesting team now because of Rodgers. B, Aaron sort of likes to control narratives, won't be able to here. He can be prickly. C, the Jets did not want this. Teams that are on it don't have a great track record of winning. The last 14 teams on hard knocks have one playoff win. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Yeah. It is, though, just another drip, drip, drip that would concern me. First of all, it's a very young offensive team. Aging, prickly quarterback who doesn't want to get hit, and the weakness of the team is the offensive line. A defensive coach with a losing record on the hot seat, an impulsive owner, the division's never been better, the conference, the AFC's never been better, the Jets have the longest NFL playoff drought, so there's no real recent momentum or history on their side, and the New York media is probably a tad overrated, but they can certainly amplify turbulence. It's great for the NFL. It's great for us. It's great for this show. Eh, I don't think it's great for the New York Jets. Not the end of the world. But I will say this. The downside to being a quarterback with an opinion on vaccines and opinions on media and wanting his own voice, being viewed as polarizing and building his brand. That's why the Jets got it. That's exactly why the Jets got it. Mr. Bon Vivant, darkness retreat, pushing back on the Packers. Robert Sala didn't want it. You get Aaron Rodgers, this is what you get. That's the downside to being Mr. Personality, Mr. Vaccine. I didn't matter if he, I don't disagree with everything Aaron Rodgers has said about politics or vaccines. But when you become Mr. Polarizing, you're noisy in the offseason. You want to tell us where you go in the offseason? condescendingly, snarkily, sort of take jabs at lots of people. This is what HBO wants. And now with Netflix in the game, can't wait to watch that Netflix series, you know they're looking for juice and heaters and gossip. <laughs> you know they are. Quinn and Williams, possible holdout. Star running back off an injury. What if it's not right? Owner's going to want his face in the series. He'll probably be around the facility and downstairs more than usual. Sala's going to try to hide, but he can't because he's a good-looking guy. They'll want him on there, too. A couple of good-looking guys. Let's get them on. Let's get some hot sauce on this thing. Here comes Netflix. We're HBO fighting for our lives in the streaming world. <laughs> One playoff win last 14 teams. I'm Almost certain it's a coincidence. So Kenny Smith uh, doing summer league stuff, and he was talking about um, Wemby. You know, a guy's going to be good when he's got a nickname, hasn't even played a game in any sport. Here's my prediction in four years. In fact, we're seeing it now. Our domestic players from our systems, G League, college, wherever, will be the most popular and sell the most shoes. European players will dominate our league and win the titles. This last draft is a prime example. Wemby is mature and layered and will make an immediate impact on the defensive end and probably will be very good offensively too. Scoot Henderson will be more dynamic, more talked about many nights, but he can't shoot. Because the European basketball system, I know it hurts, is better than ours. They value development. We value popularity and rushing you to the NBA. In, in Europe, their system is we. In America, our system is me. We're looking for likes. Our guys will get richer. Nike will love them. Their guys will win. Europe's best players, best young players, are now the world's best young players. Their guys will have titles. Our guys will have clout. And that's the way it's going to work. If you ask me today, pick four players under 30 you'd build your franchise around. 
Four for four Europeans. Luka, Giannis, Jokic, and Wemby. Four, four, four. Those would be the guys under 30 I'd build around. I'm not saying I don't like Jason Tatum. I'm not saying Trey Young doesn't have talent. I'm not saying that. Those would be the four guys under 30 I would build around today. The European system asks their young players to play against men at an earlier age. Beats them up, toughens them up, layers them up. So they come in more mature, hardened, and ready to roll. It used to be that when Europeans came to the States, they were often soft or developmental players. Now Luca walks in game one, 21, eight, and six. By year two, he may be the best peer scorer in the league. Wemby will walk in year one and be a disruptor day one defensively. Year two, he'll add 27 a game. That's the reality of it. 15 years ago, we got their guys who were developmental. Now they come in and score and defend immediately. No more of that stuff. I used to think they were too soft in Europe. Now I think our players are too distracted. That's what IG does. That's what it does. Our players now increasingly, Zion, Ja Morant, great players, distracted. Their players, more mature, more skilled, have played against older players, not about popular. It's about getting good, skilled, and titles. So I think Kenny Smith is right on. I'm not sure if it'll take four years. It'll probably take at least three but again, if I had to build around four guys in the NBA today, under 30, I don't think I'm wrong. You can argue for Tatum. I would take Wemby, Jokic, Luka, and Giannis. And I think even J-Mac agrees with that. Kenny Smith, MVP in four years. Jokic should have just won his third straight. Instead, it was Embiid, another player, foreign-born. I'm all for it. I think it's great. I love the skilled players. They come in. They're ready to play. They're ready to work hard. The head is down. They don't really care about shoe deals. I mean, all those kids probably care a little bit, but they don't feel distracted. I think our players are dynamic and fun. I love watching them play. I can't wait to watch Scoot. But if you're asking me today who's going to win the next six titles, I'll take a Luka team, a Wemby team, a Giannis team, a Jokic team, to win a majority, if not all of them. The Luka thing they got to figure out, but he is a remarkable all-time offensive talent. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.